the Maldives, a popular hotspot for Instagram and luxury resorts, but also a growing and popular place for scuba diving. In this video, I'm going to go over why it should be on your roadmap, how it got to be there, the different ways you can scuba dive, and specifically, I'm going to talk about the south of Maldives, which tends to be considered the more pristine part of it because there's less people, it's been less fished out, and they have lots of sharks. Let's dive on it. The Maldives archipelago is a massive chain of islands almost 1,200 islands with lots and lots of access to water. Now you're all probably familiar with all the Instagram shots and the luxury resorts that are there today, but it hasn't always been this way. Being up until the 1980s, it was massively a fish market and fishing was their massive export. And unfortunately, they found that it's a very fragile ecosystem. A lot of the water was overfished to feed the population of the Maldives and also export for income. Unfortunately, things fell apart as they usually do when fishing starts poaching the little juvenile fish and they no longer are able to continue to breed offspring and produce the life cycle. When you kill the juveniles, do you kill the adult population and that messes up the ecosystem? Because we're on the surface, it's not like spear fishing where you go and selectively you spear what you can see, you just generally rake everything and whatever's in the net is good enough. Or back then, they were doing a bunch of dynamite blast fishing and I hear they still do that in some regions as well, which doesn't discriminate anything in that blast radius is dead, including you if you're a diver, but generally, as far as I'm aware, this doesn't happen around the dive sites. Fortunately, the country as a whole realized the direction they were going and changed gears into fish hatcheries and tourism. And they put a lot of time and investment to beef up these markets. And Maldives today, while not the most pristine coral you ever see in the world, it still has a damage up to the 1980s. However, it is healing. The fish are coming back and it is quite a luxurious area and a great place for scuba dive. So if you look at Maldives on a map or just ask someone about Maldives, it is really confusing because there's so many islands and places to visit and some islands are big, some are small. But what's interesting and important is all the islands are around these massive atolls, which are big old circle-like rings and usually the islands are either in the center of the ring or on the outside of the ring. It's an interesting shape. These things are called atolls and the atolls formed from volcanic activity a long time ago, kind of like Hawaii today, where a big old volcanic forms at the center of the island and over thousands and millions of years it slowly erodes and eventually all that's left is the external part where the coral grows and this external part becomes where the islands are or the coral is and what's in center where the island used to be is a lagoon and usually at the very center you'll find what's remaining of the ancient volcano that used to be there and that's usually the main island so it's a very interesting geological structure and Maldives is famous for it because if you look at the map, you'll see all the different atolls. So you have to first know which atoll you want to go to. And then after that, you know which island on the atoll you might be going to. If you're not confused yet, but I'm hoping you at least can picture the different atolls. I'll be sure to display a map here and that will help you out. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the diet. The water in Maldives is warm and it ranges from 26 to 30 Celsius. That's pretty good. It's decently tropical and for the most part you can visit Maldives year-round and mostly see some good stuff. However, there are some seasons that are a little bit better, I would say more probable that you're gonna see the things you want than other seasons. So let's talk about that. In general, the most popular season tends to be August to November and it's considered the best season to go because you'll most likely be able to see the whale sharks and the manta rays, which are some of the highlights of the region. However, January through April 
is the time to go if you want to have the best visibility in the least amount of rain. So one thing to be said about Maldives is you will get a good variety. You won't see the most pristine coral. I mean, let's be honest, but you will see a good variety of legions, big fish, and a decent variety of turtles and small fish, and a good chance of seeing whale shark and mantas. The whale shark are very commonly there. As long as you avoid January and December, that's probably the least probability of seeing them. You have a pretty good probability of seeing them. What's interesting is it's often juvenile male whale sharks. For whatever reason, it's part of their migration and they always live in Maldives until they get to an older age. So I don't think any of us understand whale shark life cycle or how they think or how they are communal or how their community works. We haven't studied them enough to know, to be honest. However, we do know that it's mostly juvenile males there. So you'll see smaller whale sharks there. They're not usually the full adults. but they're a year around waiting until they are big enough that they can go off into the ocean and not be eaten alive. On top of that, you have a good chance of seeing eagle rays, of course, white tip reef sharks and black tip reef sharks. January through May is the best time to see hammerheads. But it's worth noting, Maldives is not known for the hammerhead, so it's not the best place to see hammerheads. However, if you are going to go, you might be surprised to see the hammerheads there, and those are the best months to go. Most months, you'll also have a good chance of seeing the leopard shark as well. And of course, you'll see the logger's head and the hawksbill turtle, very common there, and the common dolphin. And on top of that, in the deep south, you'll be treated with the highest chance of seeing the sailfish. I've never seen it, unfortunately, myself, and I missed it when I was there, but it's the highest chance. I've always wanted to see a scuba diving. They're quite large. If you have any great footage of them, let me know, because I'd love to see it. Unfortunately, like I said, they're kind of rare sightings, but you will see them on the south side, and you have a good chance of seeing the tiger shark. They're great to see and they're also very fearsome. In Fubamula, which is a dive resort, and I'll get into that more shortly, there is a tiger shark research center, and I will tell you a little bit more about that very shortly. It's worth noting, Male is kind of the center point of Maldives, and no matter what, you'll probably fly into Male and then disperse wherever you're going. So if you're doing a deep south live aboard or going to a resort in the deep south you'll probably take a small plane to your island where the local airport would be and then maybe a speedboat to your island if it's even more remote from there <laughs> you'll be wondering if it's not because of the coral and because of all the overfishing why are the fish there well what's fascinating and also what you'll be expecting when you're diving there is because of the unique way that the atolls are formed with a bunch of islands speckled around a center lagoon, the island in between the islands create what are called the channels. And the channels are controlling the water flow as the moon rotates around the planet. But what's cool is you'll be diving mostly in these channels when the current is hitting them the most, and that brings a lot of nutrients in and out of the lagoon. And the fish love that. You'll go hang out with all the fish right at the centerpiece of the current and usually use a reef hook. Find a rock, jam your reef hook in there, let some air into your BCD and just relax. And then usually after some period of time, let the air out of your BCD, let go of your reef hook and then you'll do a drift dive down the channel. At the end of the channel, usually in the lagoon or on the outside going into the ocean, you'll be picked up by your boat. That's like most of the dive experience that you'll have. Sometimes you can go dive in the lagoon, which is much more peaceful, usually not too much current, and you'll have some rock pinnacles in various areas that you can go dive, and there's usually a lot of life around the pinnacles. And of course, there are some wrecks here and there spotted all over the place to dive as well. All right. 
Let's talk about dive resorts. So if you're going to Maldives, this is a must. And if you want to avoid liveaboards altogether, I highly recommend at least doing the Fuvamula Atoll. It was very impressive to me, and I like what they're doing on the island. But it's worth noting, it's a small little island, and it used to be a heavy fishing culture. They're changing, as I mentioned, over the years. The island is building lots of resorts, so the low-key diving fishing area probably will change in the next 10 years to be much more massive luxury kind of resort area. But we'll see. Uvamula is growing, but what's important is it's the best spot to see a bunch of rare sharks. In this area, because it's less fished and because they are actively trying to protect the sharks, Now, sharks are much more intelligent than we give them credit for. They're not mindless killing machines. They realize that here they can go to be fed. They are protected from other parts where the fishermen do not like tiger sharks, for example, and will shoot them on sight because the tiger sharks are just a nuisance. They attack the nets with fish in them. They, and they disturb their operation. This costs money, this costs time, and so kill the shark. It's just a nuisance. That's kind of the attitude of a lot of the world really unfortunately the tiger sharks realize when they can come here for a free meal and be fed they start showing up around this island a lot i don't know how long the research station has been there but it has been there for quite some time that now there's a tiger shark aggregation i don't know how you feel personally about us feeding wildlife and controlling it but in a way i see this as kind of a natural wildlife preserve I honestly think the tiger sharks will probably go extinct if we are not trying to protect them and other animals because the way our consumerism and our capitalism works is the animals are often looked at as a nuisance. And if they're not making us money, if they're not somehow working and improving our wallets, they are expensive. And that is the general mindset I've seen across the world. And it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So I think. Uva Mula and what they're doing there is a great operation. They're using it to understand and protect and research the tiger sharks. And it's great if you're interested in tiger sharks or sharks in general, you can go stop into their shop right in Uva Mula and ask them all sorts of questions for free. And it's great. And they're also the main dive shop on the island, which I have heard from other like dive boats and other places. They don't like this because they kind of also have the authority. You cannot dive at Fuva Mula without their consent and also some payment. Some other companies don't like this and either refuse to pay them or refuse to dive in their waters because they don't want to pay the extra fee. However, regardless of the politics, I think they're doing a great job. And when you go there, you get to dive several times a day with the tiger sharks and watch the feeding. And it's one of two places in the world where you can regularly see tiger sharks. There's Tiger Beach in Bahamas and now Fuva Mula. And you're guaranteed to see tiger sharks. You will see tiger sharks, just the number may fluctuate. And they will come and feed there several times a day. And it'll feel really intimidating. These are big, powerful sharks and they're swimming around you at all times. And fortunately, in the area, they've had minimal amount of attacks. For a long time, they were saying they had zero attacks. I think recently they had a couple divers disappear. It's not a flawless operation, but when you're around tiger sharks, these are impressively aggressive sharks usually. But here, because they know they're being fed, and I think they are being domesticated around humans a little bit, they seem to keep their distance. I think you can fear them a little bit less. You'll see plenty of them. And by the end, I wouldn't say you want to go and pet them like you do in Bahamas. I, I have seen a bunch of videos where they're petting tiger sharks in Bahamas. I have not seen that in Mula. So they are a lot less domesticated. And there are at least two divers that disappeared. But I would say that they operate there fairly flawlessly and for how close and how often you can see tiger sharks there, 
I think you're doing a pretty good job. But needless to say, they give you a stick and the stick is not for like poking the shark or anything. It's because if the shark charges, if it does shark charge, they can only open their mouth so wide. So as long as you point the stick in the direction that they're opening your, your mouth, they see the stick and they understand they can't get around it. And they'll usually be intimidated about it. And they'll tell you all the safety procedures. Don't turn your back to the tiger shark. They will always hunt by trying to approach from behind. And you'll just learn a bunch of safety tips that I've shared in recent shark video. And I'll make sure I link it up above. So if you're interested in shark safety, I've learned a lot of my tips in the Tiger Shark Research Center and other research. And I put it all into one video for you to consume. Check it out and let me know what your thoughts are. In addition to tiger sharks, you're guaranteed tiger sharks, but you may not be guaranteed these other things. So you can also see thresher sharks. Thresher sharks are there, they're deep, and you often will go down, see them, and then go back up. Maybe that's your, your dive. Maybe it's just to see thresher sharks. They stay deep, and it's different than what you might have heard from like Mal Malaposqua in the Philippines, which by the way, I have a video on, and I'll link it up above if you're interested. Malaposqua, the thresher sharks is one of the only places where you can see thresher sharks come shallow. So thresher sharks like to stay deep. They have big eyes because they see in the dark. With that said, you won't see them super easily. You'll have to dive deep to see them, but it is the way. And the divers there know how to see them and they'll give you good instructions how to do it safely. If you're really lucky, you might see whale sharks and hammerheads while diving as well. I didn't get to see them while diving, but I have heard good things and sometimes also mantas. And everybody loves them. They hang out at different cleaning stations and from what I heard, they're constantly finding new deep dive sites around Bubamula as it attracts more and more divers. I do think Bubamula is going to grow for better or worse. And I'm sure we'll see much more dive sites as time goes on. With that said, just to set your expectations, Bubamula, when I was there, is a low-key fishing village. There is some nice hotels there. And they're nice, but don't expect what you see on Instagram with these nice big piers, nice big huts with straw and you can go down to the basement and see a 360 view of fish it's not like that at all so i just want to level set your expectations it's a nice hotel but it's not that it's not luxury resorts which makes it affordable and it is there primarily for scuba divers i think with so many tiger sharks there i will say you won't go there for snorkeling i would not want to snorkel with a tiger shark in the water and they're all over and around this island. <laughs> Just to be clear, it is for scuba divers, not snorkelers. And you probably don't want to go and dip your feet too much in the water. Again, tiger sharks. Tiger sharks are interesting because they enjoy hunting in shallow water. When we were there, we stayed at the zero degree residence, which was quite nice. It is only like 12 rooms, if I remember right. I'm not sure if they're going to expand since I've been there. But 12 rooms is pretty small, so you'll get to know everyone in the hotel and they have nice... And I did see a lot of new hotels being built, so that might change. Let's talk about the livable experience. Now, I was a little bit unfortunate and you can do it yourself and let me know if it's a good idea or a bad idea, but I'm going to lean towards it's the less optimal experience. We did a liveaboard experience of Deep South and Fuvamula, and I think if I were to go back, I would probably do a liveaboard in the central area and then I would go stay at Fuba Mula just so you see more coverage. But what is cool is the Deep South is more pristine. You will see lots more sharks. But one thing worth mentioning, you're going to see a lot less manta. So the manta seem to be more in the central areas. Really want to see mantas, that'd probably be the choice place. Also, I've heard that some boats that do Deep South and visit Fuba Mula on board a liveaboard get a very subpar experience. If you go and stay on Fuba Mula, you will have the prime experience. And it's because, from what I understand, liveaboards don't want to pay the extra price tag at diving some exclusive sites that only the island has rights to. You'll usually go to the lesser dive sites. It kind of just feels like a little bit of a waste, to be honest. But one cool thing diving in the deep south is you'll usually end the trip on a visit to the HMS British Loyalty, which is a shipwreck that is quite outstanding. And we dove with the Blue Force One, which was a great boat. We had a great time, it was a great crew. One unique thing that you'll do on a liveaboard that you won't get from the island experience is at some point of the trip, maybe on several occasions, 
they'll flip these big old lights into the water and basically shine them down. And what this is gonna do is attract a bunch of algae that will come and they like the light and they'll just sit there collecting around the light. And this brings all sorts of cool stuff to the surface. But most importantly, a whale shark usually will come and sometimes you get multiple whale sharks. If you're lucky, and this is quite common. I, I don't even think you need that much luck. They're common to be seen. You'll get to snorkel with the whale shark with dark water feeding on the, all the algae. And he's just just like nom, nom, nom. He's just munching down on all that plankton, not algae, but plankton. And you'll be able to just sit there and enjoy for hours until they leave. And as long as you're not getting in its way and giving it room, it's hungry. It's going to just eat. And so that is a really cool experience. It's the closest I've ever seen a whale shark. And just seeing the big light and the silhouette of the whale shark, and he's basically vertical, coming down on that plankton, is really quite a scene. You also might get to see some mantas that will come and collect. And we also saw dolphins. So that was cool. The dolphins gave the whale shark some space. And I think they were kind of curious to see what else was up there. They probably heard the humans flashing around and they were definitely pinging us with their sonar, but they didn't hang around too much. So that experience probably basically made it for me on that liveaboard. That was enough. I paid for the liveaboard itself. But what's great on the liveaboard, of course, is you'll get a huge variety. You'll go to many channels. You almost feel a little channeled out by the end of the trip, to be honest, because it's channel, 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 lagoon, channel, 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 lagoon. <laughs> it's going to be like that. You'll see so many channels. They all kind of look the same, to be honest. And you'll basically kind of do the same kind of dive. And what you see in the channel is nobody knows. It's kind of unpredictable. You might get lucky, but you will often see lots of sharks. And in fact, I've seen some of the most amount of reef sharks I've ever, and I've dove in a lot of places from Komodo to Palau. And here I saw thousands of reef sharks just aggregating, which was really cool, just right at the mouth of the channel. And what you can expect on some of those channels is some extreme current. And so I would often say that maybe Maldives, the deep south areas at least, is not super beginner friendly. With the tiger sharks, and a lot of the sharkiness and the current, I would say be a little bit experienced and comfortable with current diving before you go here. Because often you'll go down and you'll reef hook in, which is a beginner should be able to do, no problem. But then after that, you'll do a drift dive. So what's important is you have to be capable of staying with your team and things are gonna be going fast. It is some extreme current going down, ripping through. In the worst case, if you know how to deploy a DSMB and you lose your group, you'll be fine. As long as you surface and deploy that DSMB, the channel is gonna take you in one direction. So you're not gonna be blown away too far. And usually it's easy to find divers. I haven't heard of any cases of divers being blown away and not being found. So it's usually predictable where the divers are going. So it's more of a drift dive, but still it can be a little unnerving to lose your group in these current dives. Be ready for that. And you won't regularly fight the current, but there are times where there's some features or things that are worth seeing that you'll have to kind of maneuver through the current or use some coral to protect yourself for periods of time to make it to those features and observe them. Otherwise, you'll just kind of blow by and it'll be like a picture show. You won't see much. It's worth noting that sometimes you'll, for a period of time, fight a little bit of current or strategically fight the current. Being a little fit and prepared for current is probably the right mindset for these channel guys. And I don't remember any or many walls. So maybe my memory is fuzzy, but I just remember channel, 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 no walls. So that was my experience. When you're on board the boat, make sure you're looking out into the ocean and the water because you'll often see a lot of dolphins. I, I don't remember seeing too many dolphins on the dives. They didn't really have enough interest in us to check us out. 
but you will see them at the surface a lot and they're quite entertaining to watch. And lots of flying fish. So one thing to note is be careful when you're on the smaller vessels and going to your dive site because there might be a flying fish flying at your face and believe me it's going to be just as scared to see your face approach as you are to see it flying towards your face so be aware and uh, maybe keep your head behind things because they are the way they fly out they aren't looking first they kind of fly first ask questions later kind of deal so if you're in their route you're going to get a fish to the face so that's maldives at least at deep south which i highly recommend and you're supporting that tourism industry. As long as it's growing, as long as it's making money, it's going to protect the animals. And I think Maldives is doing a lot more in recent years to protect their ecosystem. And they've learned a lesson of overfishing. And I think they will continue to protect the fish more as tourism brings in more money. And it hopefully encourages other countries to follow a similar route and we can start protecting our oceans a lot more. So if I've encouraged you to check out the deep south of Maldives, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in some other great areas for diving on the cheaper side and close to Europe, so if you're in that region, you will be interested in the Red Sea. I share my experience with live aboard and shore diving and all the amazing things you'll see in the Red Sea. Check it out. Here. Until next time.